Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. The virtual gourmet. Hey, nothing virtual about you, buddy. You're right here. You're with us. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when last we spoke, uh -huh. does that sound mm. like a good lead into a novel? Yeah. Right, we're not talking mm. about novels. We're talking about Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And when last we spoke, you gave us a great tour of a city that has transformed itself into what sounds like a wonderful tourist attraction. Really? Uh, and not just for the Kentucky Derby. No. But you didn't have time to talk about the food and drink of uh, mm. Louisville, Kentucky, which you wrote about in the virtual gourmet. And I insist you start with the mint julep because it's the signature of Louisville, of the Kentucky Derby. <clears throat> well, since we actually left off talking about the Kentucky Derby in that last segment, uh, the mint julep is a natural segue. A, uh, it is the drink that is traditionally drunk <laughs> um, <laughs> at the time of the year. And basically what it is, is you take um, bourbon, of course, and bourbon is the national, not the national, the state drink. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that to um, take some explanation. But bourbon, which is now, as I said, made in distilleries right there on Main Street. Take bourbon and you, first of all, you take mint, you crush mint and uh, muddle it and you put that down the bottom with sugar and, the, and then pour in the bourbon and preferably uh, chopped ice and uh, straw and traditionally is, it is uh, served in a silver mug just for tradition's sake an old Kentucky gentleman you know foghorn leghorn remember him I see <laughs> see boy <laughs> um, and that's what a mint julep is and you drink plenty of them um, on Kentucky Derby Day and uh, any other day of the year, they're a very good drink. But the reason they're so appropriate to the Derby, of course, is because mint is comes out fresh during the uh, springtime season. Sure. So it, it, the way you described Main Street in uh, Louisville is that it over the years it's been transformed into quite a, I won't say metropolis, because it's still kind of quaint, but it sounds like there's lots of good restaurants there. And you mentioned a couple of hotels too. They always yeah. have great restaurants. Yeah, Proof on Main is in a hotel. I mentioned her Hotel 21C, which is attached to a museum. Uh, there's, there's Pat's Steakhouse, which goes back 50 years, which is very old fashioned, but uh, very, very good. Um, there's a place called Jack Ruby's, which is a big, huge, kind of Las Vegas-y type of place. There's, uh, there are several good barbecue places around. Uh, all you have to do is uh, get in a taxi. Just get in a taxi and say, what's your favorite barbecue place? Oh, I like Coleman's, you know, or the other guy says, I like Art's Barbecue. And uh, they're invariably black owned and uh, they're just terrific. So that's an easy way to find them. Um, and then, they, as I said, there are all these special. Let, let me just say a couple of words about b bourbon. Bourbon, by standards of identity, does not have to be made in Kentucky. And it's called bourbon because it was originally made in Bourbon County, uh, Kentucky. Um, so it, it has to be made with 51% corn. Okay, you can put you can put uh, rye in and other grains, but that's like 51% corn. And as I said, it languished like scotch did and, and, and rye did for decades because vodka and tequila took such such uh, a, a profitability out of it. But now they are back. So now uh, recently at auction, a bottle of mixed 20 year old bourbon sold at auction for twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars for one. Oh, my Lord. Which is wow. crazy because you can buy it online for about a mere six to seven thousand dollars. So we're talking about cult bourbons. Um, this is not, and you know, the, the, the ones that like that and Pappy's um, and Booker Noah's, those are the ones that draw the prices because although bourbons are made uh, elsewhere uh, in the United States, um, unlike scotch, which has to be made in Scotland, um, and they go into another uh, identifiable uh, Louisville uh, food, which is the bourbon balls. And those are uh, chocolate, uh, laced with bourbon, and you can buy them in candy shops all over the place. There's Mojeskas, which is a caramel candy named after a Polish actress. 
um, who appeared in, back in 1883, and the owner of this candy shop fell in love with her and named this very rich caramel um, uh, uh, meringue uh, uh, candy, the Mojeska. So you gotta look for that when you go there, okay? Very important. There's the bourbon milkshake, which is exactly what it sounds like. Just a milkshake into which you put um, uh, bourbon and then whipped cream. That's indigenous. Um, beer cheese, beer cheese, which was uh, invented back in 1940 at a restaurant called Johnny Almond's. And it was a salty, spicy cheese spread you put on uh, crackers or celery. And they even, have a, <laughs> they even have a beer cheese festival held annually in Winchester, Kentucky. Um, as with pimento cheese, which is really a, a southern thing, which has pimentos. I, I never really got the allure of that until just last week. I was in Williamsburg, Virginia, and had really good pimento cheese. It was quite delicious. And then, of course, you have, again, a southern thing, not just Kentucky, uh, country ham and biscuits. And you cannot go to a uh, party anywhere, especially before the Derby, in which a lot more mint julep gets drunk than anything gets eaten. But the table will always be laden with country ham, these wonderful fluffy biscuits. And country ham in very, very thin slices is extremely salty. Um, and you have it for um, breakfast very often, uh, biscuits and gravy. But uh, I love this stuff. I really, really like that. Um, there's something called the Kiziko, K-I-Z-I-T-O, Kiziko cookie, which was invented by the cookie lady in 1989. Her name was Elizabeth uh, Kitsiko, and she came from Africa, um, and she got a divorce and started her own little chocolate chip cookie store out of her home. Now she turns about a 3,000 per day and cannot meet the demand. So you got to see, this is how you know you're really in, real insider if you go to Louisville and say, I got to get some of those Kitsiko things. Um, then there's Burgu which goes way, way back, and nobody knows exactly where the term burgoo comes from. Um, but it's basically a stew that once contained whatever they call it in the forest, squirrel. Now, you wouldn't use a squirrel today because they're filthy little rat animals that eat garbage. But good fresh squirrel out in the uh, woods, out in the forest, has uh, made a dandy kind of, well, they don't use those anymore. But they used to have burgoo parties that would serve 10,000 people. Oh, my Lord. Uh, and those are those are very, very popular still. Um, there was one Louisville Courier Journal recipe that called for 800 pounds of beef, 200 pounds of fowl, 168 gallons of tomatoes, and so on and so forth. Um, An intimate little gathering, yeah. Intimate. <laughs> and then there's the quite famous and well-known hot brown sandwich, which was created at Louisville's Brown Hotel, which is a very fine hotel in downtown. In the 1920s, it used to draw up to 1,200 guests for its evening dinner dances, which are very popular. And afterwards, the guests went to the restaurant for a quick bite, and Chef Fred Schmidt came up with an open-faced turkey sandwich with mm. bacon and, and a Mornay sauce. It's a terrific sandwich. Um, you find it still made the correct way at Louisville's Brown Hotel and a few other places around town. Um, there's another drink, the old fashioned, old fashioned drink, which is uh, with, made with uh, bourbon, sugar and bitters. And you serve that in a squat old fashioned glass. And that dates back to at least 19, uh, 1893 when it was talked about. Uh, and it was created about 1881 at Louisville's Aristocratic and Dennis Club, the first open um, in those days. And uh, it was um, you, you take a sugar cube. This has to be done correctly. You take a sugar cube, put it in the bottom of a glass, and then you, instead of sugar syrup, and then you pour the bourbon uh, in there and um, uh, on top of that and mash it and muddle it if you like. And then there's Derby Pie. Now, Derby Pie, it's actually a trademark name of the Kearns Bakery in Louisville, which created this very rich chocolate chip pecan pie. And its name derives from the tradition of serving it on Kentucky Derby Day, uh, the first Saturday in May. Or is it the second Saturday in May? I think it's the first Saturday in May. Um, and that is really delicious. If you, if you think of a Cairo syrup um, con pie, and then add chocolate to it, that's what a Derby pie is. So those are, I've covered most of it. There are probably some that I have missed. But if you go to um, Louisville, Kentucky, um, 
you could feast for days on those, not least that wonderful salty country ham and, and biscuits uh, for breakfast, lunch, and or dinner. Mm. I feel like we've just eaten our way through Louisville. I'm full. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Well, John, after uh, our, our uh, tour of the city in the last video that we uh, talked to you, uh, and now with this, the culinary cruising of Main Street and beyond, I really want to go to Louisville. I, I was there many, many years ago, not for the Derby. I did go to the races, uh, but it wasn't Derby week. And uh, I would love to go back and see it again. It's a beautiful city now, as Art says. It has the river, it has the bridges. It's uh, yeah. great, you know, sunset. It has the the the, uh, the showboat that, that you get on. Great restaurants, yeah. fine hotels, terrific museums, and lots of good food and boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Thank you, John. The virtual gourmet, folks. Get John's newsletter. It's free. Shouldn't be free, John. I want you to start charging for it. Yeah. It's worth a lot of money, but it is free. So, folks, go to johnmariani.com and sign up for his virtual gourmet newsletter. You'll enjoy all his stories and, and, and particularly his writing. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.